and welcome to the fifth and final episode of the Iron Sharpens Iron podcast series. Iron Sharpens Iron is proudly brought to you through a collaboration between Nestle Needs Youth and Youth Connect Africa. I am Letabo Satole, your host, and I would like to say thank you for journeying with us over the last couple of months. In this episode, we're focusing on job hunting and employability for young people. Our aim is to share creative strategies that can help you enhance your job search efforts. Whether you're a recent graduate or a young professional looking to switch careers, a practitioner in the gig economy or a freelancer, our discussion today aims to equip you with practical tools to improve your job hunt and to achieve your career goals. I am joined today by two special guests who are also representatives from the two partners behind this podcast. We have Notkolo Mnisi, who's a senior talent acquisition and management partner and youth lead at Nestle East and Southern African region. We are also joined by Grace Mugabegazi, who is the senior policy and programs advisor at Youth Connect Hub. Thank you for joining us, Nicolo and Grace, and welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron. Thank you for having us, Litaba. Nicolo, I'm going to start with you and ask if you could please tell us a bit about your background and how you got into the field of youth employment and talent acquisition. Thank you once again, Litabo. As you mentioned, I am currently the senior talent acquisition and management partner, as well as youth lead for Nestle Eastern South Africa. So my journey with the youth portfolio started back in 2016, when I joined the organization as a talent acquisition specialist. At the time, I was supporting our um, factories and our distribution centers, as well as the corporate office from a recruitment point of view. And it was during the period that the organization had just launched the Nestle Needs Youth portfolio back in Davos in 2013. We rolled out the Nestle Needs Youth agenda globally. And in sub-Saharan Africa, we officially then launched it in 2019 which was just in time, you know, for COVID because then the the organization really got to support a lot of young people during that journey. So I started off as a youth lead in 2020, officially supporting the broader organization in rolling out youth strategies in three categories, namely employment and employability, entrepreneurship, as well as agripreneurship. Our journey has been really, really exciting. Grace, thank you so much for also joining us today. I want us to ask you, I want to ask you rather to provide some insights into your role as a senior advisor at Youth Connect Africa Hub and how it relates to supporting young Africans in career development. Thank you for having us, Letabo. We are a Pan-African initiative that's 10 years old in terms of our pathway, but five years into becoming a continental initiative. We have presence in 32 countries and have over the past five years reached over 12 million young people in Africa. We do a lot of work trying to resolve the, the concern of jobs for young people. Part of what we do is entrepreneurship development. That's a major part of the work that we do across the continent, both at national level, but also at continental level. We identify entrepreneurs and uh, support them uh, with skills and resources to scale the work that they're doing. But we also found that it's quite important to support young people to find employment because not everyone is an entrepreneur. And uh, some of the things that we've been doing in that aspect is uh, working on the policy side of things, but also working to create opportunities for disadvantaged youth to have access to information on opportunities, to learn how to present themselves the best, and then also to learn how to retain their jobs. So that's from a programmatic perspective. And, And from a policy perspective, one of the things that we've been advocating for is a lowering of requirements for entry-level jobs so that 
more young people can have access to that first opportunity to a professional job and with that opportunity then have a broader spectrum opened for themselves, whether to pursue, you know, remote work or to pursue a professional career in one area or the other. Grace, I'm glad to hear that you're advocating for that. I mean, over the years and as a young African, I have noticed that for a lot of the public sector and policy jobs, you know, the minimum requirements in terms of qualifications will usually be master's degrees, which is eliminating a lot of young Africans. So I'm glad to note that you're advocating for the reducing of requirements in that regard. Nakola, I think maybe it would be great for us to just define, you know, one word that I think we'll be throwing around a lot throughout the course of our conversation, and it is the word employability. What does that mean? So employability speaks to what other additional skills can you know a person add to their portfolio in order to make them more marketable or more employable in the market i'll give you an example if i graduate from university with a BCom in marketing management, but how do I then go about positioning myself and creating platforms or opportunities that would make me more marketable and more, you know, be seen and recognized in industry? That's where other additional conversations come into place. It could either be in the form of what extra courses or certification can I do to expose myself a little bit more? Or how do I go about, you know, creating my portfolio and profile in such a way that industry recruiters who are looking for someone with my skill set can see me. How do I make myself different from some of my other, you know, counterparts or other graduates that studied the same qualification as me? So just to round it back, for me, employability means better positioning in terms of your profile in either, you know, you can be in an entrepreneurship space or even in a work environment seeking for a job? How do you position yourself a little bit better and make yourself more marketable in industry? Are you speaking about just hard skills or are soft skills also important? Soft skills are extremely important. How do you, you know, sell yourself? How do you market yourself? I'll make you a simple example. I've conducted quite a lot of interviews in my career and One of the things that we see in a lot of young people is they lack the ability to sell themselves in interviews. What have you done? Even from a university perspective, right? A lot of young people do not know how to structure their CVs in such a way that they are marketable to a job recruiter. A lot of young people do not know how do I show up in an interview, not just by appearance, but also via conversations. So it speaks to quite a lot of small pockets, but a lot of the soft skills come into play because that's what sets a lot of them apart from the rest. We come with the same qualification. You know, what's so special about the one that ends up getting the job? It's because they probably were in a position to sell and market themselves a lot more better with this extra soft skills that they have. So there are quite a lot of programs or you know, certifications that they get to do that will also help top that up. But not necessarily, you know, you don't have to even go the route of I must go study to, you know, uh, public speaking or I must go study how to position myself better. Some of these things are offered by organizations such as ourselves as well, where we coach you on how do you show up in an interview? How do you put your CV together? How do you engage with line managers and recruiters whilst you're invited in those platforms? So it covers both soft skill as well as, you know, the hardcore skills and qualifications as well. Thank you so much. And um, I think on the topic of soft skills, I think that they're very important for networking. Grace, I want to ask you this do you believe that networking is important for career growth and what strategies do you think young africans young people can use to build more meaningful professional connections um so networking is definitely very important for a young professional And even for someone who's been on a career path, networking helps you, one, identify opportunities, have access to the information that you need to be able to present yourself to opportunities. But secondly, it also helps you build the social capital that you are required to enter certain jobs or opportunities. So one of the things that employers often look out for is referrals, being able to have the the networks of people who know you, have exchanged with you, and are willing to put their names out 
for your endorsement is quite important when you're searching for a job. In terms of how you can uh, build those networks, one of the things that I really truly believe in is participating in communities that are geared towards serving in the ways that are meaningful to you. Thank you so much. I mean, Nokolo, you speak about, you know, some young people not really having the soft skills that one requires to market themselves. And Grace here also speaks about the importance of finding communities, finding spaces where you can serve and you can get to know other people. But what do we say then to the young individual who may be introverted or may find networking or marketing themselves slightly uncomfortable? So... Unfortunately, to a certain degree, you would have to engage with people and societies in order for you to build that pipeline or build those connections. And you can do this through different ways. For me, mentorship and coaching are one of the big ones. If, you know, as a young person starting out your journey, even whilst you are still in university, that help and guidance from a coach and a mentor, especially, you know, in your field of study can help redirect you and perhaps maybe tap into the network and opportunities quicker. So that would be the first. You have platforms such as LinkedIn where thousands and thousands of professionals sit. You know, if I am a agriculture graduate or I'm an HR or engineering graduate, there's a lot of heads of engineering, heads of HR, recruiters that sit in the platform such as LinkedIn. There's nothing wrong with you reaching out through messages to say, I'm looking for X assistance, could either be in the form of coaching or mentoring, but also in the form of, can you help me answer certain questions? I mean, as a young person, you can reach out to a recruiter and say, can you have a look at my CV and tell me if it's packaged or positioned correctly? I want to find out then if it's important for young people to develop a personal brand that aligns with their career goals. You know, people sometimes say you are not what you do, but is it important? And, and especially if you're going to leverage LinkedIn or social media to market yourself. Personal brand, most definitely, Litabo. I always, when I speak to a lot of our fresh graduates, when they start out in our organization, part of the first thing that I try to coach them to do is already identify themselves in terms of what they stand for and what it is that they want to achieve and then create their personal brand around that. As much as it's all great to be a jack of all trades and know everything else, but be known by that one core thing that you stand for and that can help you build your portfolio and your brand around because it's easier to then navigate and be intentional about where is it that you are trying to get to or what does your career progression look like? Absolutely nothing wrong with changing you know, your mind at some point like some of us have. So. Personal brand for me is firstly identifying who you are and what you stand for as an individual and where are you trying to get to? What does your goal look like? And then you pair those two and then build your brand around that. Thank you so much, um, Nokolo. I then have a follow-up question for you. We've spoken about, you know, some of the advantages to using platforms like LinkedIn and other social media for, you know, promoting yourself or marketing yourself as a job seeker. But what are some of the potential pitfalls that job seekers should be aware of when using social media in their job search, but also in their social and professional networking efforts. And thanks for that, Itabo. So for me, being in the recruitment space, one of the things that, you know, we've obviously identified that are pros and cons of social media is it's, you know, social media has enabled and opened up platforms to allow people to sell and market themselves without having to leave their houses. You can do this obviously through your phone, through your laptop, but some of the disadvantages are that, you know, you still then have to deal with a lot of fake ads and a lot of, you know, crimes that are being conducted in these platforms. People have identified the, you know, that young people are desperate for jobs, not even young people, even professionals, that a lot of people are desperate for jobs. And this has obviously caused a lot of challenges challenges in the space where people will create fake ads and ask people to pay money in order to, you know, I'll, I'll help you find a job or Nestle is looking for X career for us to be able to hire you, you'd have to pay a thousand rand into our account in order for us to do that. So that's definitely, I think, one of the areas. But secondly, you know, there's a trick that I always say when I have young grads join our organization and I always say, Google yourself, you know, when you start out. 
what information about you is out there in public. So a lot of the things that we do or say uh, on the social platforms, you know, when they say then internet never forgets, even after you've deleted uh, your, your whatever post that you would have shared, be either discriminatory or, you know, where you were being violent and so forth. So you need to also be very, very wary or, you know, what you put out there as a person uh, on the social platforms, because this eventually comes back to haunt you at some point. Because if you Google yourself and the first thing that comes out is a post where you were victimizing people or you were being mean or rude, automatically yourself, you know, brand is tarnished. So those are two things that I think you should be very, very careful of whilst trying to build a brand. What does it look like 10 years from now when I'm sitting in an executive role and somebody does a search on me that will pull, you know, information that I did as a young person who still probably didn't know any better 10 years ago? Thank you so much for that. Grace, I want to find out in the context of Africa, what would we mean if we said Africa's job market is evolving? The introduction of digital technologies have really transformed our markets with uh, mobile phones, with digital financial services. A lot of the world that we knew, say, maybe 10 or even 20 years ago has really changed. So We've seen businesses go more and more online. People uh, don't necessarily uh, look for information where it used to be found. They are going online to pursue, you know, identify who is doing what, who is the best uh, service provider for this or for that. And because of that, there's a new emergence of a whole marketplace of, of, you know, digital service providers, people who are creating websites, people who are creating financial payments systems. In many African markets, people rarely carry cash on them. They use M-Pesa in East Africa, mobile money in other countries. If not, they're using debit cards or credit cards. Thank you so much, Grace. And Nokolo, with the rise of remote work and digital platforms, how do you believe, you know, maybe borrowing from some of what Grace has just spoken to, that young people and young job seekers can tap into global opportunities as freelancers or practitioners in the gig economy? Most definitely. I loved the one point, you know, Grace made to say over and above the qualification that you come with or you bring onto the table, what other additional skills do you have outside of that qualification? Digital has, of course, by far been a huge piece of our lives, especially, you know, post the COVID era or, you know, as we plunged into COVID. So what supposed to be a 10 years from now future suddenly became more a reality now. Right. And how are young people leveraging in a lot of those skills because unfortunately that HR qualification alone will not make you marketable anymore. HR is digital now, right? Marketing is digital now. Engineering is digital now. So over and above the skill that you come with from a degree point of view, uh, you know, that leverage or that advantage when it comes to acquiring other additional skills, such as digital qualification, a project management qualification that can help you give that leverage in terms of your marketability. Grace, I know that Youth Connect Africa often deals with policy matters. And in the conversation around this ever-evolving job markets and jobs of the future and remote work and leveraging tech, I want to know how you believe policymakers and multilateral organizations can collaborate effectively to, one, protect workers in this new you know, environment, but also to help young Africans become more employable in this environment. Thank you for that question, Letabo. I think it's a very um, interesting one because on one end, I will speak to, for example, a very interesting dynamic within the creative industry where young people who are skilled are now able to access digital jobs. But these digital jobs, which are global and well-paying, are often under the radar of what government counts as 
employment. So when they are looking, for example, at, at who's employed, they'll look at who's paid within traditional systems and is actually taxed for their payments. Therefore, that's at the moment going under the radar. Now, in terms of whether how governments and, and multilateral organizations can ensure that they are supporting this transition, I think we we have to prioritize enabling young people to participate globally, African youth to participate globally. And to do that, we have to work on providing them the opportunities to really hone the, their skills, uh, really, you know, get the right skilling, but also get the right opportunities where they continue to improve themselves. I think we also have to play a role in terms of uh, brokering the markets for to attract those uh, global opportunities to Africa. I want to ask Nicolo and to yourself, Grace, as well, as we wrap up our conversations, you know, how can young people stay motivated throughout their job search process? You know, how can you advise and encourage young people to persevere through, you know, just the very emotionally draining, also sometimes exciting process of looking for work and just trying to kickstart your career? very difficult one to do, to be honest. I think, you know, a lot of our graduates come out of the system or come out of university with the edge of I'm ready to go into the work environment. And of course, you start applying. So for me, I always say there's a, you know, a few steps that you must follow in terms of ensuring you are targeting an opportunity that you are definitely keen on. So the first one would be, you know, as you are finalizing your university studies, already identify the top 10 or 15 or organizations that you want to work for from a, you know, it could either be your values or from the learning point of view. I want to work for Nestle because it's probably the biggest food and beverages organization in the world. And I, you know, I like their values. So already start noting those processes down or noting those guys down. So from that 10 or 15, already start doing a little bit of research in terms of what does it entail for me to be able to get into a program, internship or graduate program with this organization and what kind of application processes do they utilize, right? In a, you know, example with the Nestle, we use a gamified qualification assessor. What does that look like? Do a little bit of research. How do I start then tapping into the networks that other recruiters at a Nestle or at the organization that I'm trying to get into? Thank you so much, Grace. And thank you so much, Nicola. Some of the key takeaways for me is just remain teachable, also remain curious and remain informed in what's happening in your industry, what new skills you, sh- you should maybe look into acquiring and, you know, network. Keep a healthy and good professional network with people in your space and I guess other people as well. Thank you so much for your contributions to this discussion and thank you for joining us for the final episode of Iron Sharpens Iron. It has been an incredible journey and I've been honored to speak to, you know, some of Africa's youngest and wisest, most vibrant people who've been doing some incredible, incredible things in their respective fields. And we've discussed through our series a lot of ways to engage young people and to be more intentional about helping young people in their efforts to make meaningful impact on the continent. So Nokolo and Grace, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so, so much to Nestle Needs Youth and Youth Connect Africa for enabling this conversation throughout the five episodes of the podcast. And to our listeners, thank you for always lending us an ear. We hope that you've learned some valuable lessons. I know that I have. And until next time. Thank you so much. Let's continue planting the seeds of change together and and working towards the Africa we want.